Ah, hoogie guys! Welcome to an updated showcase for supplementaries. This mod adds a variety of different vanilla plus content, no matter what category. Additionally, since the last time I reviewed it, a ton of new features were added. So, let's start. The wind vane changes visuals depending on the weather and it also adjusts the redstone output. If you're searching for a solution for vertical redstone problems, the cog block will help you. This upgraded redstone block will transfer the energy to a maximum of 14 cog blocks adjacent to it. This funny action is made with the extended piston. Look, even the villager is amazed by this. Not only will it move entities twice as far as the vanilla version, but also extends once again if you fall on it. This contraption is restricted to entities. Just as a side note, entities on this machine will jump a bit higher. If you want to scream a message across the whole server you are playing on, the speaker block can do just that. Being able to decide between narrator and chat message and even adjust the block range, this can be a very good tool for welcoming new people or trolling. <laughs> Depends on your friends. By renaming the block, a different message will be used instead of the default speaker block. The turntable will change the orientation of the block that it's facing. However, depending on the signal strength and the pulse duration, the turntable will act differently. With the right click, the direction can be reversed. The block itself can face any direction, but it needs to look upwards when the player wants to rotate an entity. Equipped with either rope or chains, the pulley is able to deploy or retract the selected item. If a block was attached to it, it will also be pulled up. This can be done manually or with a crank or a turntable. When rotated, it will rotate all pulleys adjacent to it. The clock block will display the time as a block, but one is also able to right-click it. After each hour that passes, the machine will output an update that observers can detect. The dispenser minecart is basically a minecart but combined with a dispenser. <laughs> Depending on the redstone power, the pillows will push air in the direction they are facing. It comes with a few handy tweaks like refreshing fire, pushing entities, speeding up furnaces, oxidizing copper. Proportional to the redstone energy supplied, the redstone illuminator will subtract its light output. An alternative for levers is the crank, turning to provide energy. With a shift, it can be reversed. A powerful multi-tool is the force cell. With the right click, it can be opened, but depending on the block behind it, it will unlock its potential. If an inventory filled with items is attached, the item will spill out on the floor. Liquid will be symbolized with droplets and can even be transported by attaching another liquid container. This even applies on different modded blocks. In this mode, they are also able to solidify concrete blocks. Otherwise, one is able to dump liquid in lava cauldrons or sponges, avoiding a mess. One is able to fill the hourglass with sand, honey, slime or dust. Depending on the material used, it will fall down in the bottom of the hourglass. Depending on the remaining time, it will output a redstone signal detected by comparators. It can be reset with a turntable or manually. If you feel unsafe, then try to lock the lock block with a specific key. Firstly, assign a key to this machine to then be able to output a redstone signal when using the correct key. The sconce lever is a mixture between a sconce and a normal lever. One can unlit it to reverse its abilities. Before moving on to the new chapter, be sure to check out my gaming channel. I just uploaded another 100 days video, but this time I'm a dragon in Minecraft Hardcore. Rarely found within shipwrecks or when trading with wandering traders, the globe will display a randomly generated blocky world unique to your seed. It can be spun manually or with redstone, whereas if a player interacts with it, it will show the current coordinates. Visually connecting together the pedestal can not only display one item on top of it. Special ones like swords, tridents, tools or globes will have special properties when displayed on a pedestal. If an item is removed, the pedestal will send out a redstone signal, helpful for building traps. Prevent this by swapping the item with a sack. 
Decorated with an end crystal, the block itself will have an enchanting power of 5, which means you can get a maxed out enchanting table with only 5 of these blocks. These horizontal banners are also known as flags. Using different shapes for the known patterns, unique ones can be created with flags. Or one can just convert his already crafted banner, lower or raise a flag if placed on a pole. This inventory block can hold up to one stack of items. When opening the GUI of the present, one is able to determine for which player it should be in a small description. After packing it, only the recipient and the packer can open the present. When blocks burn, there's a chance that ash will be created. This block is affected by gravity, rain may wash it away, but it can be used to create soap. Well, what's soap? Soap blocks are slippery blocks. When placed next to a wet sponge with a bellow, it will create bubble particles. The notice board can display a written book, map or a banner. However, with the book it will only display one page at a time. Use a redstone signal to turn the page. Depending on how many spaces there are, the text size will change. Automatically feeding animals, the fodder is a very handy block when it comes to livestock animals. Babies will grow up faster and adults will breed automatically. With a hoe we can remove one layer and dispensers can place it down. Bamboo spikes will slowly damage mobs walking on them, but can even be infused with lingering potions to get an infinite potion bamboo spike. This can be tweaked in the config. With crate or quark, the spikes can be combined with contraptions or pistons to deal out more damage. Supporting all plants without the need of water, the planter will also prevent crops from being trampled. Similar to the notice board, the hanging sign can hold and display text, an item or a banner pattern. If attached to the bottom of a block, it will swing when hit by entities and will even visually connect to fences. Maybe this reminds you of MS Paint. The blackboard lets you go full creative mode. You can directly use quartz or coal for not having to change one block at a time. Upon breaking the block, it will keep the drawing, which can be previewed when hover over it. Frame blocks coming in three variants, braces, cross and frames, are very handy for building. They can hold any solid block inside of it. Use an axe to only remove the frame. New medieval decoration blocks are the dope and wattle. When a dope is placed inside a frame block, it will automatically convert into the medieval decoration block. This shulker-like box is fire resistant and can be locked with a key. A player only needs to have the correct key in their inventory to open the safe. To remove the ownership, shift click with the key. This feature is very customizable having multiple options like indestructible saves or bound to the player who places the safe first. Another lockable block are the netherite doors and trapdoors. Firstly accessible to everyone, it can be locked with a key. When powered with the redstone, gold doors and trapdoors will disable any interactions with players. Iron gates are decorative upgraded fence gates. It will automatically connect to others placed on top of it. It can be up to three blocks tall. Now to a bigger feature, the robes. Not only can these be placed against a ceiling, fence, wall or already placed ropes, they are quite similar to scaffolding, being able to go far out horizontally from the closest support and to no longer support it. Climbing on horizontal ropes will slow you down and shake your camera. Vertical ones can be climbed. However, they can be broken by projectiles, breaking all ropes that aren't supported. Shearing a rope will remove its button connection. One is able to extend a rope downwards when placing it against a vertical one, pushing blocks attached to it. With a shift click, one is able to pull up the block. Falling down ropes will prevent fall damage. Uh, well, that was a lot of info about ropes. <laughs> Store your piles of flint in a flint block. The feather blocks will negate all damage and also emit feather particles. Holding up to three lines of text, the doormat is welcoming cats to occasionally lay on them. One can hide a single item under it. Alternative to torches are scones, candelabras and candle holders. They can be made unlit with water logging or a splash potion and relit with various methods. Currently the candles aren't implemented, however, will it be soon. Up to two signposts can be placed on any fence or sticks. The direction of them can be reversed with a shift click. Use a compass to make it point towards the position of the world spawn or a lodestone position. 
These blocks also support dyes and ink. A single flower pot can hold up to three flowers at once. This also includes double plants. The statue can hold a single item, whereas some have special visuals like candles, tools and swords. It will wave when powered with redstone. Another decorative block are the copper and crimson lanterns. These can be turned off with an empty hand and on with flint and steel. An early game shulker box is the sack. If a player has more than two at once in their inventory, they will be inflicted with overencumbered. This block is affected by gravity and can crush entities under it. The goblets can be directly used to drink liquid from. To capture small animals, mob cages can be used. To do so, just click on a mob of your choice and release it once again with the right click. Shift right click to place it down. I do kind of feel like I'm in Animal Crossing. <laughs> capture mobs won't age, but some will have a unique animation. Jars can store up to 12 cookie-like items. Cookies can actually be directly eaten, but you can even store animals in this small container. However, they can also store liquid. Thanks to the varied customization, you can add manually data packs for custom liquids. Apart from all of these features, Supplementaries also adds a variety of new decoration blocks, such as Blackstone, Deep Slate, and Stone Lantern, etc. Also, if you are searching for a good server hosting provider, then try out Server Pro. Not only that you will support me by using the link in the description, but Server Pro features a lot of different gaming services, reactive and helpful support, and even VPS to host multiple servers at once. Also, thanks for watching the video. A new defensive weapon is the slingshot. Being able to shoot blocks, it will even place them if possible. This tool can be enchanted with quick charge, multi-shot and stasis. The latter is a new enchant added by the mod only found in end cities. This allows the shot to not be affected by gravity and thus shoot in a straight line. All non-sitting pets can be summoned with the flute. One is able to bound it to a specific pet. Extra songs can be added via data packs. Wrenches are a very handy tool allowing you to rotate any kind of blocks, even double chests. Shift click to reverse the direction. Some entities like item frames or armor stands can be rotated with left click. Additionally, our wrench works as a fast melee weapon, being the strength of a wooden sword, but quicker. If you didn't know, you can eat soap. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Any dyed items can be combined with soap to revert them back. It also removes the oxidization of copper blocks or can wash away blackboards and tipped spikes. A very fun item is the bomb. It explodes upon impact, however it doesn't destroy any terrain. The more stronger variant is the blue bomb. It can be found within chests while exploring. They will firstly flash for a second before detonating upon impact, inflicting damage and fire. The rope arrow will deploy a rope coil wherever it lands. This is very useful for exploring caves. Another fun item is the bubble blower. The main purpose is to blow bubbles. <laughs> It can be recharged with soap. If enchanted with stasis, the bubble blower allows you to place down fancy bubble blocks that break upon touching. A new food item is the candy. Perfect very easily with honey and sugar, this will fill up your hunger bar quite fast. However, one might experience nausea after eating too many in a short period of time. Pancakes can be piled up to 8 at once and honey can be added on them. If any other mods are installed that add chocolate or syrup, it can be poured on pancakes as well. With honey or anything similar, pancakes will ground a small speed bonus. You can also insert them in a jukebox for some dance music. Obtained through wild flags, wandering traders or mostly as loot and pillager outposts, Flax is a new crop used in various recipes such as sacks, fodder, doormats, etc. All vanilla and modded lanterns will now have a fancy animation and can be placed on walls. If entities hit them, they will swing around. Custom map markers can be activated if one right clicks on a supported block. These are beds, signposts, conduct, beacon, lodestone, respawn, anchors, nether portal, end portal or flags. Mob heads can not only be decorated with candles, but also stacked on top of each other. Adventurer maps are now sold by cartographers. These are closed maps indicating the direction to a vanilla structure, such as a jungle temple, igloo or end cities. 
However, you won't know to which one until you open the map. Scam alert! <laughs> Additionally, one can add more maps via the config. Now to something more dangerous. Gunpowder can be placed like redstone dust. <laughs> if you own a tamed skeleton horse, you can convert it to a zombie one by feeding it a stack of rotten flesh. Books can be now piled up and placed down. By default, enchanted books will be placed down horizontally, whereas normal ones will change the colors and stand vertically. A mixed option can be enabled via the config, and even a book and quill can be placed with a shift click. This supports a ton of modded books. Burners can be placed at the bottom of a block or on horizontal ropes. Attached chains or ropes on bells can be used to ring it. Vandalism Minecraft, but it's with bricks. Throw them to destroy glass or damage entities. Up to three times in one block, sticks and blaze rocks can be placed. The ladder will even damage entities walking on it. Cakes can be stacked on top of each other, and one can eat it from all sides. Now to some misc features. A new bomb painting, trucker shells as your helmet, and notch apples can be unenchanted. Why would you do that? Vines placing below campfires, crossbows with tipped arrows will have a texture of the arrow, right click on a clock for the in-game time, access and dispensers will strip or strip blocks, and they can fire and apples. Occasionally you may find signposts scattered around the world, indicating the direction to a nearby village. One can find urns underground in caves. When broken, they will drop commonly trash items, such as bones, but rarely they can give you even rarer items, such as bombs, emeralds. It is affected by fortune. Within this block, one can also find antique ink, change signs to an antique font with it, but can also be crafted into an antique map or the sapia globe. Alongside bodies of water in deserts and arid biomes, one can find wild flags. A rare red merchant will spawn after spending a longer time in game. It sells an assortment of explosive items. Well, that was it for today. Um, check out my gaming channel if you want to support me, and we'll see us in the next video, which will take a little bit longer, because it will be a very big video. <sighs> Stay safe in game. Ciao!